The oldest shoe archaeologists have ever found is a 5,500-year-old leather hide moccasin with leather cord laces. Today, we don't have to go hunt an animal to lace our shoes. We can buy our shoelaces ready-made in a variety of materials, styles, lengths, and colors. This company produces shoelaces and shoelace-type drawstrings in a wide range of materials, including cotton, rayon, and acrylic. This run is producing polyester shoelaces. A worker installs cones of fine polyester thread on what's called a creel, which feeds the bobbin winding machines. She groups the strands from eight cones and feeds them through one side of one machine and onto a bobbin. Then she groups the strands from another eight cones and feeds them through the other side of the machine onto a second bobbin. Each group of eight strands will produce one thicker polyester thread. She programs the machine to wind a specific length of it. Each cone holds enough fine thread to wind a 71-mile-long thick thread. For this particular shoelace, the machine is programmed to wind 8,200 feet of thick thread per bobbin. Another worker installs 20 of those bobbins on a braiding machine. For each one, she passes the end of the thread through three eyelets, the second of which regulates the tension of the thread. She gathers half the threads and ties knots in them so that they'll catch when she feeds them into the machine. She starts up the braiding machine. It draws in the knotted threads, which pull in the unknotted ones. Then the machine begins braiding a continuous round shoelace cord. These wheels apply tension to pull any loose braids tighter so that the cord diameter is uniform. The finished cord, which is about a mile long, collects in a barrel. Some shoelaces are made of knitted rather than braided cord. The cones of thread feed the knitting machine directly. The machine's four latch needles can perform two types of knitting stitches to produce round cord. Once the knitted or braided cord is ready, a worker adjusts four metal pegs of a winding device to the shoelace length they're making. Then she winds the cord around the pegs, up to 250 times, depending on the cord diameter. She cuts the end and ties the cords together so that she can easily transfer them to what's called a tipping machine. She runs the center of each cord over an acetone-saturated felt pad, then inserts it in the machine's die. The die wraps a piece of acetate film tightly around the cord, then cuts it in the middle, producing a shoelace with a stiff tip called an aglet on each end. This press applies a nickel-plated steel tip, a kind used on bag draw strings. The worker manually positions two tips directly on the cord, with a slight gap in between them. She activates the press to force them on, then cuts the cord in the gap. This factory also makes Rick Rack, a flat zigzag trim that's sewn onto clothing. These Rick Rack braiding machines are 120 years old. Each one holds from 13 to 73 bobbins of thread. The more bobbins used, the wider the rickrack. There are two ways to make multicolored rickrack or braided shoelace cord. Mount different shades of solid color bobbins on the braiding machine or wind multicolored thread on each bobbin. And for multicolored knitted shoelace cord, mount different shades of solid color thread cones or multicolored thread on each cone. To produce different shapes and sizes, this manufacturer uses different types of braiding and knitting machines, varying the number of bobbins or cones from 8 to as many as 73. An even number produces a round shoelace, an odd number produces a flat one. With so many possibilities, shoelaces can be fashionable as well as functional. <laughs>